We play and call it work. Hello there, Wargamers. I am Luca from Mini Wargaming, and I am here to talk to you about the new Astra Militarum rules in the greater good. This is the fifth book in Psychic Awakening, and boy does it give them a lot of rules. We are talking new stratagems, of course, new warlord traits, kind of, in the form of ace tank rules, which I'll get into in a moment. And last but not least, for the basic Astra Militarum, Custom regiment rules. You know, you take two of these rules, smash them together, and there's your new regiment. A little fun fact, I play a game in the vault with Vito, Demons of Slanesh, versus the regiment from Gudrun. If you're a fan of the Eisenhorn series, I I didn't I don't really get a whole lot of information about how they play, but I, I like to imagine they specialize in a mixed force of armor and infantry, and that's that's why I tried to make my regiment around and I'll go into details about which ones I picked when we get to them in this little review. And of course, there are a lot of additional rules for the Militarum Tempestus, including two pages of stratagems, and I believe five different types of ways to play them. So I say, let's start this off with the basic Astra Militarum, and we are gonna go over some of those regiment traits, and uh, I'll tell you my favorite ones. 12 regimental doctrine traits to choose from, not all of them are winners, let's be honest here. And again, you choose two of them and smash them together. So you have a lot of potential combinations here. Now I know a lot of you are gonna probably change it up a lot between your games and wait until you find something you like. A lot of you are just gonna find two and you're like, boom, that's it, that's good for me, I'm done. I don't have to worry about the rest of these. Not all winners. I'd say out of all 12 of these, only five of them I actually care about in a way. And out of those five, three of them I think are good. And that is 100% subjective based on my preferences when playing these games. First one I like is Gunnery Experts. This one is identical, I'm pretty sure, to the Catachan trait, where you get to reroll the type characteristic of a one die of a type characteristic of, um, of a heavy a a vehicle's weapon. So a Hellhound and its Inferno Cannon has 2d6 automatic hits, for example. Well, with Gunnery Experts, you're allowed to reroll one of those d6. Uh, Lehman Rust Battle Cannon has 1d6 shots. It's every time it fires, uh, but if you fire the top turret twice, you could potentially roll both those. A lot of, lot of good potential here. A, a, a execution and Plasma Cannon, uh, Basilisk if you really want to, Wyvern, one of those. It's, it's a really good trait. It's one of my favorites from Catachan, and if you like to play Armored Company, for example, and you don't care about the extra strength and the extra leadership that Katachan get along with their regimental doctrine, well, then you don't have to care about that. You take gunnery experts and you take jury rigged repairs, maybe, for example, which is one of the other five I like, not one of my three favorite. Well, maybe it's one of my three favorite ones. It's not the best, but it's not so bad. So at the start of your turn, much like jury rigging, the stratagem in the codex, you roll a d6 for every vehicle you have. On a two or more, it heals a wound. That's pretty good. On a five or six, it heals D3 instead. That's where it kind of shines. That could be pretty clutch, and that can get you into certain brackets and back to hitting on fours, maybe hitting on fives again. I think that's a really good combination if you want to play Armored Company. Now, if you're not too worried about bringing too many vehicles, but you still like gunnery experts, and you want Lehman Russes for gunnery experts, or maybe you just want Basilisks in the back line to make sure you're pretty much getting that six shots every time, you could do Disciplined Shooters, maybe. And if you want like, a good mix, Disciplined Shooters makes it so your rapid fire weapons fire double the amount of shots if they're within 18 inches instead of their normal rules for rapid fire. Now this obviously gives a lot of power to your infantry squads. Rapid firing from 18 inches away combined with first rank fire, second rank fire, you don't have to get that danger close, you can stay that extra six inches away. Not a bad combination. This is actually what I chose in my game as a Gudrunite regiment. I don't know, I just wanted a combined force of infantry and tanks, and I felt that both of these in combined felt really nice. Another one I don't mind is spotter details, though Josh made fun of me for this one. It's, I can see it not being that important for Astro Militarum, but there are a few examples of where this would be very good. Now, spotter details increases the range of all heavy weapons that are already 24 inches or more by a further six inches. So the Demolisher Lehman Russ, the Punisher Lehman Russ are now 30 inch range. The, well, the Battle Cannon doesn't matter. The Battle Cannon is like 78 inch range. The Executioner's, I think 38 inch range at that point. And yeah, uh, I, I think of those immediately. I can't think of any other 24 inch range that need longer range, because everything else is kind of overkill. But I do like this for Lehman Russes. That's not a bad one at all. Uh, your Wyverns are 54 
if that matters at all to you. Your is it, oh, by the way, this isn't only vehicles. This is all heavy weapons. So mortar teams go up to 54 as well. Pretty much all heavy weapons, again, that are 24 inches or more already, get a further six inches added to their range. If you want to fire Basilisk, that thing shoots 246 inches now. Now, I can understand why that would be pointless. Uh, this also obviously works for if you like the Hellhammer a lot, but you hate the minimum range on it, it's not that simple. It's like 36. It makes it 42. The tank already moves 12 inches a turn. It doesn't care if it gets tied up in combat, so it's not as important for that one, but that's one of my favorite ones. Now, one of my favorite ones might not be that great because it's incredibly situational, is Monster Hunter. Whenever you fire a heavy weapon at a monster, any unmodified wound roll six does one mortal wound in addition to its normal damage right away, Punisher. Gatling gun comes up to comes up to mind, right? It's got 40 shots if it moves less than half of its movement on a Lehman Russ, and then every six is a mortal wound in addition to its um, damage. Now you combine that with something like uh, Vengeance for Cadia. If you're fighting against Chaos, Demon Princes, or any of the greater demons, that right there is an insanely powerful combination, and that will be very effective. Though the problem is, ideally you want to choose your regimental doctrines before you know what your opponent's playing, because it's like part of your army construction. So if you choose it afterwards, you're kind of list tailoring, and you don't want to always gamble. So I was thinking about taking this one for my Gudra Knight uh, regiment as well, because you know there's the uh, the, the Cardons, I believe they're called, like giant cats, like dinosaur-sized cats almost it seems, and or prehistoric dinosaur or sized cats, just big cats, and they're kind of rare, but you know, the giant monsters, I'm like, oh, that's kind of cool, monster hunting. But then again, I found out Vito was playing Slanesh, and I'm like, there's a lot of monsters in that too, I could have showed that off, but I'm like, ah, that might be too much, I don't know. It was a whole lot of like second guessing myself. I ended up going with the other two instead. And those are my favorite ones. The other ones range from really obscure rules such as if you don't move, your tree is being in cover for infantry, I believe. It is only infantry, so your guardsmen go to a four-up save as opposed to a five-up save, which could be good. You have agile or hip fire, fire from the hip, where you can advance and fire rapid fire weapons still. It's just that negative one from the hit roll. You have slum fighters where you roll a six hit in close combat as an additional hit. Uh, you can see where those are kind of cool, but I mean, they don't, ah, to me, they don't scream something that I want to do. Uh, but I've pretty much gone over my favorite ones. Like, there's a lot, like, even with those five that I told you, the six that I told you, you can make some really cool combinations uh, from your favorite planets in Warhammer 40k. Uh, because when it comes to guard regiments, there's a heck of a lot more guard regiments than the one that you're allowed to play in National Militarum. This, to me, makes a whole lot of sense. And I know there's a lot of success with Chapter of Space Marines. There's a whole lot of Splinter High Fleets and all that. It, it all, I, I, can't, I guess it all makes sense, but I feel like it makes a lot of sense for guard because there's just so many regiments up there, it's nuts. Let's move on to tank cases. Now, this is a different take on Warlord traits. If you have an Astro Militarum character as your Warlord, instead of giving him a Warlord trait, you can pick a tank in your army and give it a tank ace ability corresponding to what kind of tank it is. Uh, this means uh, Lehman and Russes have a specific, uh, sorry, Lehman and Russes have a specific tank ace table or I guess list of tank ace rules they could choose from, support vehicles such as Wyverns, Hydras, Manticores, Basilisk, and Death Strikes could take a specific rule, and then your super heavies as well. This is kind of like the Horus Heresy where you could make um, a super heavy tank, a tank commander, and it would get a better ballistic skill and it would get certain rules added to it. Now I'm not saying you get better ballistic skill with these, but you get cool additional rules tacked on. For example, for the super heavies, you can go with Inspiring Might. Uh, when a morale test is taken for friendly Astro Militarum within six, you roll one additional d6 and discard one of the dice. This is kind of reminiscent of the Solar Auxilia rule for the Horus Heresy, uh, where it affects morale. Uh, essentially, you were always treated as, like, I think, leadership 10 when you're near like, a tank commander in a super heavy tank. The next one is Hold Down Deployment. If this guy doesn't move, Sorry, yeah, this model receives the benefit of cover until the first time it moves in battle. If your super heavy Bane Blade tank never moves, it's always got a two-up save, which is awesome. Like, super good, I think. I mean, it all depends on, you know, the, the type of army you're facing against, but I mean, I feel like most of the time I try to ignore it unless I can kind of kill it in one go, and if I'm going to do that, I need already high AP. So, maybe that cover helps, maybe it doesn't. I would, all I know is it would make it that much more obnoxious. So, yes, your super heavy vehicle always has cover as long as it doesn't move. And once it moves, well, it loses it, but whatever. The last one, and probably the one that people might take the most, I don't know, it all really depends on the situation of the doctrine traits and everything. Steadfast Leviathan, you make your super heavy tank, it gains your regimental doctrine rules 
even if it's not in a Supreme Command attachment. You can bring it on a, in a super heavy auxiliary detachment on its own and it gets your regimental doctrine rules. That is always nice. Now, it's not hard to make a Supreme Command detachment for the Astro Militarum. It's just like super three super cheap characters and a tank or a super heavy tank and you get a few extra command points. But if you don't want to go that route, you can just add the basic super heavy auxiliary detachment and bam, make it a tank ace instead of taking a warlord trait and bam, steadfast leviathan. Now, I would like to note that there is a new stratagem. Well, one of the new stratagems that Astro Militarum have access to if they have an Astro Militarum, it, it, this, uh, this one actually works if you have an Astro Militarum character in your army. You don't need to, I don't, I'm almost certain you don't need the whole regiment to, uh, to unlock it, but it's, it's tank ace. You spend one command point and you make one of your tanks a tank ace. You can't have, um, you can only use a stratagem once per battle, and essentially you can't have more than two tank aces in your game. But you can give up a war, you can forego a warlord trait and then use a stratagem to make one tank ace with a stratagem and one by giving up a warlord trait. Or you can keep a warlord trait and then spend a command point and also have a tank ace. Now I know you're curious what a few of the other ones are, so I'll go over all of them because there's not too many and it's pretty quick to go over them. The Lehman Russ ones are my favorite. The first one on the list is Master Mechanic. Uh, the, the ace, tank, or the tank ace, the pilot, the guy who drives the tank or someone on the tank knows how to m repair minor damage really quickly. Essentially what this does is it's a wave serpent serpent shield. It reduces the damage you take from range attacks by one to a minimum of one, which is amazing. Super good on an already tough vehicle. Tough and save vehicle, three up save, I reduce all damage I take by one. And you can make that your tank ace ability. And you're thinking, wow, that's nuts. Oh, there's even better ones. Uh, the next one is slow and purposeful. This is one of my favorites. If you stand still or move less than half of your movement, essentially grinding advance, you get to reroll wound rolls of one on the main turret, the main turret itself. It's not, it's not like, uh, so it, it's almost exactly like grinding advance, but you get to reroll wound rolls of one for the turret and you get to shoot the turret twice. Really good because there's not a lot of access to rerolling wound rolls of one as opposed to Vengeance for Cadia, I believe, and I might be missing another one, but if there's one more, there's only two options and there's not a lot of options for that, especially when you're shooting 40 shots with a Punisher, you get to reroll wound rolls of one. Very effective, okay? Very effective. The next one is Weapon Expert. You increase the armor penetration character of uh, the turret weapon by one, which means, you know, you get an extra AP. Again, I'm, I know I'm, I keep saying it over and over again, but the Punisher. Now your Punisher is Strength 5, AP 1. If you've ever been tired of rolling the Heavy Bolter separate from the Punisher, well then, here you go. 49 shots, all Strength 5, AP 1, go, one giant roll. Saves you a lot of time there. And I gotta correct something. I, I said Slow and Purposeful only works for the turret. It actually works for any attack uh, that the tank would make. The Lehman Russ, so the Sponsons, or like the Laz Cannon, or the Heavy Bolter on the hull, they all get to reroll when rolls one, not just the turret. But as Weapon Expert, increases the AP of the turret specifically by one. Now, Battle Cannons at AP 3 are great. The Plasma Executioner at AP 4, I believe, is awesome, because that just negates 3-up saves, or 4-up saves and cover. 2-ups become a 6-up, you know, you, you get the idea. That, 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 that one is probably one of my favorites. I think Weapon Expert is my favorite one, though Slow and Purposeful is a good runner-up as well. Armored Rush, now these get a little less interesting. We have Armored Rush in a shooting phase. This model can shoot with its turret weapon it is equipped with, even if it advanced. So you just, you advance your tank. Obviously you're not getting grinding advance if you're gonna try to advance and get somewhere. But you get to shoot with your turret and advance. It's kind of nice to have if you wanna go for a very quick based armored company, I suppose. Uh, and this tank ace could kind of lead and still shoot every turn. Next one is Up Armored. Pretty basic, your Lehman Russ has a two up save now instead of a three up save. It's not bad, but I'd, I myself would rather reduce the damage I take by one. Again, it's situational, and you get to pick these after you see your opponent's army because it's like a warlord trait, so you pick those afterwards, right? Uh, what, he, what he'd specialize in. And Steel Commander, if you pick a Lehman Russ that is already a tank commander, they get to issue one more tank order than they normally would, which with paired up with a stratagem, Inspired Tactics, I believe it's called, you get to throw a third order. Not so bad, you know, something to consider, but I think the first three are my favorite ones, and they're all differently good. Now the last ones to cover are the support aces, which are your support vehicles, your artillery pieces. Uh, the first one is, these all work differently for certain types of vehicles as well. These don't all work for wyverns, these don't all work for basilisks, these don't all work for death strike missiles, or death strikes. Full payload, you, your ace always rolls maximum damage, so right away I think basilisk. 
or I guess Manticore or Death Strike. Technically those all work, it's just not as great with the Wyvern. So your D3 damage on your shots are always three. It's an amazing rule, your Manticore, your Death Strike, always max damage, perfect. Shatterer of Will, uh, you reduce the leadership of the enemy you shot at by two until the end, um, subtract two on that unit until the end of the turn. So you pretty much make their morale a little bit more punishing. It's okay. It's again, this is a support ace. I don't know if I'd go for that one, but it's a cool option to have. And in my experience, options always let you win games. It could be something to stack up with that, that I'm not immediately seeing. And then the last one is well stocked magazines. This one lets you reroll the type characteristic of any or all of the dice. This one essentially saying when you fire your, your basilisk, you, you roll two dice and take the highest. You could reroll both of those. A wyvern in particular rolls four dice. You could reroll one. Two, three, or four of the dice. That's pretty good for a wyvern. What I, what I, I think I personally, I, I guess you know, you could be playing uh, Astro Militarum games without any Lehman Russes, therefore you wouldn't care about the Lehman Russ ones. And then all of a sudden, your artillery ones make a little more, uh, or have a little bit more appeal. Or all of a sudden, if you run maybe a couple Bane Blades, your super heavy aces are a little, have a little bit more appeal because you could, you can take the same trait. By the way, you can't, you don't have to take different ones. You could have two super heavies with a cover or with two up saves or steadfast leviathan bring them in their own two separate attachments plus a brigade like a fully maxed out brigade then they both get the trade as well um, it, it, it's nice options and I, I tend to like these a lot more than the astro militarum warlord traits especially since they didn't give you any new ones in this book unless you want to count these as warlord traits they kind of are uh they essentially replace warlord traits and you have a stratagem to give you more of them i'm a big fan of these these are some of my favorite additions to the game and I imagine a lot of you probably agree. The Astro Militarum were already a pretty powerful army. I know that I often struggled against a really competent player. And these just give them more options and scary options to boot. Next step on the Astro Militarum review train here are stratagems. Now you have access to 14 new stratagems for Astro Militarum, your regiments specifically. Not all of them are good. And a lot of them focus heavily on certain units you bring to your games, but... A lot of them are good. I know I said not all of them are good, but a lot of them are good. First of all, one of my favorite ones, I'm just going to go right into it, Hail of Fire. Uh, two command points. It's a little pricey, but remember, you're Astro Military, you don't care about that uh, as much as any other army in the game. In fact, you probably care the least about that. Man, is this one good. So you take your vehicle, a Lehman Russ in particular, and when you go to shoot at an enemy vehicle, your type characteristic, example, the amount of shots you shoot, is just maximum. Just maximum. Maximum. I think this is nuts. I don't know, I could be wrong here. We could be talking about, uh, you know, we're throwing out some examples here. Obviously it doesn't work for Punishers if you like to run Punishers, uh, but we're talking Plasma Executioners having 12 shots, Battle Cannons having 12 shots. Now, you're, I know a lot of people sometimes don't like Battle Cannons, but when it comes to the Vigilus Relic Battle Cannon having 12 shots, that that, that thing does three flat damage per shot, and it's just maximum shots against this. And say you're firing at a Chaos vehicle, like a Corn Lord of Skulls, or a Chaos Knight, and you Vengeance for Cadia, I'll just reroll hit and wound rolls with my 12 shots. Don't mind me. Oh, sorry, I killed your thing in one shot. Ah, sucks to be you, I guess. And that's not only for the turret. It works for the Sponsons as well. I think that's only relevant for Plasma Cannons, though. Uh, actually, yeah, I, I believe it is literally only relevant for plasma cannons, but it makes your plasma cannon shoot maximum shots, which is awesome. Uh, which kind of skews maybe more to the plasma executioner being like the best case to use that. But I guess you can still have the battle cannon one with the, the plasma sponsons on it if you really wanted to. Ideally, you're going to want plasma sponsons with this stratagem. Hail of fire, rapid reloading is at the core of tank crew training. Man, that's good. I love that stratagem. The next one uh, I think is really good is Relentless. One command point, you use it at the start of your turn, as you would jerry-rigging. You select a vehicle model that is not titanic, so this won't work for the big guys, and you treat it as if it's taken zero damage. A Lehman Rust tank commander, your opponent has been struggling to get it down, and they got it down to one wound, and you're like, ah, crap, now it's kind of crippled. It, it can't really move that much. It hits on fives. Ah, it's okay. It moves its full distance if it wants to, and it hits on threes again. One command point for this, and you can just do it. I'm pretty sure you can only do this... Da -da 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 -da. End of that turn, that model. Yeah, you, at the start of your turn, it's pretty good. It's really good. Relentless is really good. Pretty sure you could use this one multiple times because it's not really in a phase. I, you know, I'm not going to go into too much details about that. I don't want to think about that one too much. I'd have to go look deeper into the FAQs and stuff like that, but potentially can use that 
as many times as you want, as long as you have command points to do it, because it's at the start of your turn. Because I know they have had to clarify other at start of turn things, and then they errata them saying, you can only use this stratagem once per turn. Like Jerry Rigging, for example. This one doesn't say once per turn. So astromilitarian vehicles are so rugged and robust that they can be pushed beyond their limits. Therefore, you know, who cares if they're taking damage? They always fight at full strength, baby. Next one, and I'm going over my favorite ones here. Again, these are subjective. There's a 14 here. It would take a lot of time to go over them all in detail, but I'll, I'll rummage through some of the ones I'm not as interested in. Direct Onslaught is uh, another one of my favorites. It's not super broken overpowered, but I mean, when combined, again, with the Emperor's Wrath Artillery Battery, I believe it's called, the Vigilist Detachment, this is all that much better. So, sorry, I had a hiccup there. Now, what this does is wyverns and manticores specialize in out of line of sight fire. Though, when they're firing at something they can directly see, they're all the more devastating. You get plus one to hit for one command point with a wyvern or a manticore if it can see, draw line of sight to its target. This works really well with the Emperor's Wrath because you get to fire your wyvern, the top gun, twice. So that doubles up with that, plus one to hit. And if you really wanted to blow in a few more command points, because I'm pretty sure that's like five at this point, if you use this one, Aerial Swatter and the Fire Twice. Again, your guard don't care as much. You get to fire twice, plus one to hit, reroll all hit rolls with Aerial Swatter. And you can, I think you can shoot at separate targets with that one too. I don't have the Vigilist one with me right now to confirm or deny that, but that's a pretty good combo, though it is pretty CP heavy. But it makes a lot of use out of a Wyvern, which is I think is like 127 points now. It went up in points in Chapter Approved because they knew, maybe they knew that it was going to get a lot better and they didn't want them to be as cheap as they were. Next favorite one is Concentrated Fire. This one works for heavy weapon teams specifically. Uh, if you fire all of your weapons from a heavy weapon team unit, you know, the three bases of like the guy and the weapon, the guy and the weapon, the guy and the weapon, at the same target, you get plus one to hit and wound. That obviously pairs up well if you have orders on them, such as like, you know, take aim or bring it down. Usually take aim because I like to imagine using this with las cannons. Las cannons hitting on threes with guard. And I know they're super easy to take out though, but nowadays mortar teams are, I think a mortar is nine points, whereas a las cannon is only 15. So it's only six more points than a mortar. So the unit itself is only 18 points more expensive than a mortar team. Now I know a lot of guard brigades and they like to stretch the points out as much as they can to add like a knight or maybe super heavy tanks and stuff like that. So it might not be as useful to bring las cannons, but las cannons with plus one to hit and wound can be pretty clutch, especially with take aim on them. And that could do a lot of damage. Now, it doesn't do anything for the damage. The damage is still just a random D6. But, you know, plus one to hit moon. But that means you have to fire all weapons. So your, your las guns have to fire in that direction too if, if they can, right? If there's nothing else in range, then you don't care. Now, for mortars, plus one to hit moon with mortars could be pretty cool too. Um, but I mostly think of las cannons. And I don't, I don't really run missile launcher heavy weapon teams or heavy bolt or heavy weapon teams. And I, I have run auto cannons, but... I'd rather have the AP of the last cannon. I don't know. I don't know. I think it's a cool strategy. It's only one command point, fun to use, and can be pretty effective. Moving on to the more obscure stratagems. Uh, one of these I do like, we'll start with that one. Again, it specializes in using certain units, though I know a lot of stratagems tend to do that regardless. This is deft maneuvering. You use it in your opponent's shooting phase, and it only works for your armored sentinels, but you pretty much have the damage an armored sentinel takes. Now, you might think, who cares? Uh, a lot of the time, armored sentinels are really cheap things to throw into a brigade, and they can just sit on objectives. And, you know, they're toughness six with a three up save. I believe they have six wounds. But, you know, it means your opponent's going to have to commit something bigger to take that, like, super cheap, I think it's 60 points, that you don't really care about yourself. Sure, you'll shoot, a, you'll shoot an auto cannon every turn for each one of them. I know I used to run a brigade that was pretty effective with a, a Castellan before the Castellan got nerfed which is auto cannon armor sentinels. And if I could have the damage on them, that would have been pretty effective because they're pretty good in backline objectives and people would think they're easy targets, but then, you know, you just make them, they, they take half damage and it's, it's great. Not so bad. Uh, strike first, strike hard. This one works for scout sentinels and armored sentinels. Until the end of that phase, when resolving an attack made by that model, you get to add two to the hit roll. So it's kind of like they, they scout forward, they move forward, and they strike hard and strike right away. This only works in the first turn, but you give them plus two to hit. Sure. I guess. They're cool little walkers that get plus two to hit. It's, it's not great, but I figured I'd, I'd show off uh, some of these random obscure ones like uh, splash damage. If you have flamers or heavy flamers, you get to reroll the wound rolls. Or is it mostly for... Oh, it's actually specifically for hellhounds. Sorry, I, got, I, got, I lost track there. This one's specifically for hellhounds. And you get to reroll wound rolls 
with their weapons if you're targeting something that's in cover. But this doesn't work for all the weapons. It works for the Inferno Cannon, which is the Flamer, or the Melted Cannon against that unit. Oh, I guess no, it works with all three of them. The Chem Cannon, Inferno Cannon, and Melted Cannon. Oh, I guess it's pretty much saying it doesn't work for the Heavy Bolter or the multi melter on front of it, but it works for the three main turret guns. You get to reroll wound rolls if they're already in cover. Kind of obscure, but can be pretty cool. Again, not all these were great, but some of them really are, and some of them are very situational. Another random stratagem is rolling death. This one works only for Torox models. Uh, if they move less than half their movement characteristic, they get plus one to hit. Woo! I don't think I've ever used a Torox, so I don't actually know. But I, I think they can have a lot of shots with that one weapon, so maybe that's not so bad. Now for the Ordo Tempestus. The Astro Militarum got a lot, a lot of stuff in the Psychic Awakening. It's... This is like almost an entirely new army, the Ordo Tempestus. So before you had your Stormtroopers. They were in the Astro Militarum Codex. They had their rules. I believe like six to hit were extra hits, stuff like that. Now they have six regimental doctrines that they themselves can play from. And a lot of these might be familiar. I'll list them off. We got the 54th Cyan Jackals. We got the 32nd Thetoid Eagles. I'll be honest, I haven't heard of any of these myself. The 133rd Lambden Lions, the 43rd Iotan Dragons, the 55th Capic Eagles, and the 9th Iotan Gorgonesses. Gor oh, they're both from Iotan. There's two different regions. That's cool. Gorgonesses. Gorgoness? Gorgon N E S. Interesting. Uh, well, they get regimental doctrines. They all specialize in different uh, facets of warfare, and they're all differently good at certain things. And I have your stormtroopers. Now, I apologize if you play any of these and I butchered those names. I have never heard of these. I don't know a lot about the, uh, the Ordo Tempestus stuff myself. I know more about the Astro Militarum, that aspect of the book. This is just, like, so much more stuff. I mean, you've got thieves, you've got warlord traits, you've got relics, and you've got stratagems, people. If you've been waiting for this, well, congratulations. Here it is. Never would have expected this. This is awesome. I'll try and quickly go over what they do. The Cyan Jackals, they have a death from the dark. Anytime they kill a model, it's treated as two when it comes to morale time. So you kill, you kill five, I can't think of an example now. You kill five cultists off, but they've technically lost ten for the purposes of morale. So they're a spooky type of uh, Tempestus unit or uh, regiment, I suppose. The next one are predatory, predatory Strike from the Thetoid Eagles. Whenever they resolve an attack with a ranged weapon, with this Doctrine against a unit that is within half range, an unmodified hit roll of six scores one additional hit. So, it's kind of like reminds me of the Stormtrooper one, I suppose, but I think that one only works for rapid fire weapons. Regardless, they get extra hits on sixes to hit if they're in half range, and we're, we're, we're military to pest this. They're, they're going to get in half range, let's be real. They're either going to airdrop in, or they're going to like parachute in, or they're going to like just teleport in. They're going to they're gonna get in half range, especially because they have access to some nasty ways to get even closer than that nine. Yes, that's true. They can get closer than nine inches away. Next one is prize weapon, uh, prize weaponry from the Land and Lions. Their their armor penetration of their weapons is increased by one, and this works for all the stuff they can bring. Oh, I guess I should. I'll go over what they can bring in a moment because it's not as much of the Astro Militarum as you'd expect. It is a little bit more limited in what they can bring. Uh, the crack shots from the dragons. They get to add six inch range to the characteristic of their rapid fire weapons. So their hot shot las guns go up to twenty four inch range now. Uh, their plasma guns are 30 inch range, which is kind of cool, actually. And there's, anyways, you, you get the idea. Uh, mobilized infantry, the Capic Eagles. Infantry models of this doctrine do not suffer the penalty for moving and firing heavy weapons. That is always good. When resolving an attack made by a model of this doctrine in a turn in which it disembarks from a transport, you add plus one to the hit roll. I'm pretty sure these guys hit on threes already because they're veterans, right? So they come out of their vehicles, they come out of their whatever it is they're riding in, and they maybe they were in a Valkyrie, they drop in, and they hit on twos. Oh, there's ways to make that really good, because you can drop in from a Valkyrie, and I'm pretty sure there's ways to let stratagems that let you drop in with five, but we'll get there, we'll get there. But plus one to hit is super good, uh, especially when you're going to supercharge your plasma, because the rule still exists. If you have plus one to hit, you don't actually get hot in your plasma. It's impossible, because that one turns into a two, and then the weapon rule checks to see if it's a one. It's actually a two now, and you're fine. The ones, unmodified ones always miss. It's not unmodified ones to die from plasma. So maybe that's something you're interested in. Popping out of vehicles, annihilating things with plasma, and keeping all your guys alive. Last one is going to be Resolute Heroism from the Iotan Gorgonesses. 
Gorgonsness. I don't know why I can't say that word. Regardless, when you're shooting at the nearest enemy, you get one additional hit on an unmodified hit roll of six. Don't know why there's a whole lot of these extra hit ones, but sure, they get it, and that's their thing. Obviously, in a Militarum Tempestus detachment, you gotta have the Militarum Tempestus keyword. Now, these are the things that you're allowed to add to your regiments here, your Militarum Tempestus, uh, Tempestus regiments, without taking away from your rules. Though these units themselves do not gain these regimental doctrine rules. Uh, first of all, we have Tech Priest Engine Seer. We have Servitors. We have the Ministorum Priest, Crusaders. Aeronautica Imperialis units, so your Flyers, your Valkyries, all that kind of stuff. Militarum Auxilia. We have our Officio Prefectus, which are your Commissars, and your Scholastic Psychana, which are your Psychers. And I'm pretty sure the Militarum Auxilia stuff are like Ogrins and, and, and stuff like that. Your weird Rattlings and whatnot. You can include all of those into your, doctor, uh, into your regiments. So obviously anything else is not accepted because those are for the Astra Militarum, not the Militarum Tempestus. We'll try and power through some of these relics. All the relics, the heirlooms of the regiments here are only specific to the named regiments. There's no default ones. If you want some of the default relics, you can go back to the Astra Militarum Codex. The Hound's Teeth are for the Scion Jackals. It is a chainsword upgrade that is strength plus one, AP two, two damage. Already pretty good. But instead of making one additional attack, it's three additional attacks. So it makes your guys strength four, uh, AP two, two damage, not so bad. And if you're fighting Eldar, you get to reroll the wound roll because that's what they specialize in fighting. They've been fighting guerrilla warfare with them for a long time, apparently. So saith the book. The next one is gonna be the Fire of Judgment. This is for the Eagles. It is a pistol two. It replaces a hot shot Laz pistol. It's 12 inch range. It's two shots, strength three. Doesn't matter the strength because every time you hit with it, you just do a mortal wound. So it can do up to two mortal wounds or zero to two mortal wounds as long as you hit. Usually if you're re-rolling hit rolls of one, it's not so bad. Well, I guess a character wouldn't order themselves unless they wanted to. But it's a nice way to get those two mortal wounds because it's a character. So a little more reliable shooting on them. The next one is going to be the Refractor Field Generator. This is for the Lions. This one I kind of like. It gives a, it's a Refractor Field to five up and vulnerable save, but this is a generator, so it makes a bubble of a five up and vulnerable save. Anything within six inches has, um, and it's not just infantry, any model within six inches has a five up and vulnerable save near this relic. So that could be good for... I can't think of too many backline Militarum Tempestus firing things, but maybe you, the experienced player, will know more than I. I think it's, it's just kind of nice to have a 5 up invuln save, right? Next one is the Emperor's Fury. This is the Iotan Dragons. It's a plasma pistol. Uh, it pretty much makes it so your weapon is pistol 3 instead of pistol 1. It just gives it two extra shots, which is not bad. So strength 7, minus 3, 1 damage, or strength 8, minus 3, 2 damage, 3 shots instead of 1. Distraction charges are for the Eagles. Uh, it's, um, it's, it's, it's an odd one. We're resolving an overwatch attack made by a friendly model within three inches of a model with this relic. If the attack scores a hit, the target is slowed until the end of the phase. When a charge roll is made for a slowed unit, you have the result. It's not, it's actually not weird. It's really good. It's actually really, really good. So here you have your model with the relic. Whenever things nearby this relic, including the model with the relic, fires overwatch, as long as they hit, that's all they have to do is just hit. They reduce the charge the opponent's trying to do by half. So even if they're three inches away, or they need a three inch on their charge, they still have to roll six. And that's, that's where it's like most devastating. If it's like, if they're over seven inches away, then they, if they're seven inches away or more, they, they've automatically made their charge fail. I guess that's also really powerful. It's actually not a bad relic. Not a bad relic at all. The last one is the Blessed Bolt Gun for the Gorgon Nesses, is, is, is the ones I can't pronounce. These ones, apparently I read up just a little bit now, these ones specifically work with the Sisters of Battle. Therefore, you have a lot of similarities in between them. And uh, two dozen sisters of the Order of the Glowing Chalice have prayed over this holy bolt gun. Okay, that's the order they work with specifically. Anyways, it's a, it's a bolt gun replacement, and it's rapid fire one, strength five, minus two, two damage. But it can target characters if they're not the closest, and whenever it's targeting a psyker, it's damage three instead of damage two. Not so bad against things like demon princes, because you can target them now with this. If you want to do three damage to them, you rapid fire one, so it could be two shots. You could get lucky there, you know, things like that. And that's, that, that's, that's the heirlooms, that's the relics we have here. Again, very specific to the exact reg, named regiment. And there's no way to make specific regiments for these guys yet, I guess. But uh, yeah, kind of cool relics. And you know what, like I said, a, a pretty pleasant surprise. Six new warlord traits, again, all associated with their specific uh, Militarum Tempestus regiment. The first one is skilled trackers, the Scion Jackals. At the start of the first battle round, before the turn begins, you are allowed to redeploy, I believe it's three of your units. Yeah. Sorry, 
how to reread that one. You get to redeploy three of your units. That means you can put them into reserve. You can re redeploy them anywhere you want. Essentially, you as this player controlling this regiment always know where your units need to be. This is specifically good if you're the attacker and your opponent counter deployed somewhere defensive. Well, you can just redeploy three of your units over there instead and be like, tough luck. It is what it is. The Eagles have uncompromising prosecution. Prosecution, that's right, that's the word. Essentially, anyone firing a hot shot volley gun or hot shot las pistol or hot shot las gun within six inches of this roller trait, any six to wound is AP4 instead of AP2, I believe. The Lions have the keys to the armory. Your warlord has a six inch bubble of reroll hit rolls of one. They are a space marine captain. Not so bad, and that means you can issue out different orders as opposed to take aim. The Iotan Dragons have precision targeting. You get to choose an enemy unit within 18 inches of this Warlord, and any of your units that shoot at this unit ignore its cover. Not the best, but it's what they get. The Capic Eagle Warlord trait is Master Vox. This guy can issue orders up to 24 inches away, as opposed to the normal six, and he can even issue orders inside of a transport. You just have to measure to the transport to see what the range of the order would be. This is specifically good because I find that, or I would imagine, that the Militarum Tempestus here, they like to drop in all over the place. They're not one organized situation of like the Astra Militarum forces, like a, a gun line or like a parking lot. These guys are all over the place, highly mobile, trying to take out their enemy as fast as and uh, precisely as they possibly can. The last one for the Gorgonesses, uh, it's the Sanctity of Spirit. Anytime uh, a Psyker, is, I guess it's, oh, enemy Psyker only, that's good. Okay, anytime an enemy Psyker tries to manifest the power they perils on any doubles instead of one and that's within 24 inches as well not like within six it's a super long range to force people to peril on doubles kind of a cool power or i guess world retreat jumping over to the last segment of this first impressions video and another fancy surprise for the military tempestas they too have 14 new stratagems. Not all of them, again, are amazing. There are a number of winners here, and I'll go over some of my favorite ones. First one being point blank efficiency. This one's kind of nice, one CP. Uh, if you're firing at something in half range of your hot shot weapons, they are plus one strength. Make some strength four. And you know, you can uh, AP two strength four. That's not so bad, guys. That's not so bad at all. Next one, pretty good. If you are to take a morale check near a Commissar or a Tempester Prime, by the way, these are both 1 CP, you automatically fail. It's a lie. I mean, you automatically pass. Quite the opposite. So it's pretty much you automatically pass morale. It's insane bravery if you're near one of these two characters, but for 1 CP instead of 2. Next two favorites, and are both very powerful. These both work around Aeronautica Imperialis vehicles, uh, so your flyers, and specifically says with the flyer roll. The first one needs the grab shoot, so as Valkyries, ones with transports. One command point, precision drop. When you are dropping a Militarum Tempestus unit with, uh, like, we'll say a Valkyrie, dropping it in with a Valkyrie, you can drop them within five inches of the end, sorry, more than five inches away from the enemy, not the normal nine, so you can easily get all their guns in, in range. And this works well with that one regiment that gets plus one to hit when they come out of a vehicle. And on top of that, you know how there's a chance your guys might die if it moves more than 20 inches before it drops them off? Well, scratch that because they ignore that rule as well. So they drop perfectly safe no matter how far it flies, and they can drop within five, or sorry, within nine inches, more than five away from the enemy, uh, which also makes it a super easy charge. It doesn't take away their, they can still charge if they want to, but we all know they're really bad in combat, so they're probably not going to. But you never know, it's an option you have access to if you so choose to take it. Now the next stratagem is Hammer Blow. This one's a little costly at two command points, but don't forget your guard, so you might have a lot more, but I guess your military to pass this, you're a little bit more elite guard. Regardless, this one works for your Aeronautic Imperialis vehicle as well. It goes in, you use this stratagem after it kills a model in a unit. And now that unit is pretty much crippled. The Hammer Blow. So the overwhelming firepower from this vehicle is enough to cripple this unit for a short period of time. It pins them down. A pinned unit is negative one to hit. Is it for shooting attacks or just... Yeah, range weapon. Negative one to hit from range weapons. It has their advance and it has their charge rolls as well. That is like almost turns that unit off. Well, unless they hit on twos, if they're custodies. But even, even like pinning custodies down to place is still a pretty big accomplishment. But you still have to kill a model. So I guess it's a little bit harder to do for custodies. But you get the idea. That's a very powerful stratagem. The next couple will have advanced countermeasures. This one works specifically for Valkyries. You can say that it's gonna hover, but it doesn't lose, it's hard to hit. So it's still negative one to hit, 
but it, you can control its movement a lot better, and it's only one command point. Now, the next one I like a lot. This is Killing Zone. After you shoot with one of your Tempestus Regiment units, or whatever regiment you are, infantry, and you kill a model and a unit, you use this one command point, and then the rest of your infantry from your army get plus one to wound that unit. It's great at killing a Death Star unit, like uh, like Death Guard Terminators or like a really nasty Terminator. Um, sorry, a really nasty Terminator unit or something that's just generally really durable. You just drop down all around it. One unit kills a model, and then everything else is plus one to wound it for one command point. It's a nasty, nasty one-two punch combo. Now, the next six stratagems I'm going to talk about are specifically for the named regiments, such as the first one is Tactical Misdirection for the Cap uh, the Capic Eagles. Essentially, if one of your units destroys an enemy unit, you spend one command point, and then on your enemy shooting phase, when they go to shoot at anything that isn't the nearest Capic Eagles unit, because you're trying to draw attention to them, and they're shooting at something else in your army that doesn't have, essentially, the Tempestus Regiment keyword, all the support stuff, it's negative one to hit them as they're trying to tactically maneuver all fire onto your Capic Eagles instead. It's really weird and situational, and it would require a lot of proper setup, but it could be cool if it works out. Next one is Drill to Perfection, your Iotan Dragons, Overwatch on a 4+. plus. That's super good. It's like really, really good, especially with Plasma, right? No one wants it. Well, I mean, people might not care, but I mean, that could still be super devastating, especially like a Veterans unit with 4+, plus, or a Command unit, I should say, with 4 Plasma in it. The Cyan Jackals have Elusive Hunters. Essentially, when one of your units are shot at, you can pay, pen one command point to make it negative one to hit them. A uh, great counter to Plasma, but it only works if they're not in half range. So essentially if they're kind of far away, but you can kind of trick your opponent into overheating with Plasma weapons. So I'd always recommend letting them know beforehand because it, can be, it can be a little nasty. Uh, a surprise, like a surprise like that, just throwing away really expensive Plasma models. The next one is Gifts from the Mechanicus. This is the Lion's one. Whenever they roll a wound roll of six, unmodified moon roll of six with any of their hotshot weapons, this unit you use a stratagem on, a six, it does a more wound in addition to its normal damage. So again, six to wound with a hotshot weapon is a mortal wound in addition to its normal damage if you spend a command point on this unit. And that's gifts from the Mechanicus. The last two would be full charge from the Eagles, the Thetoid Eagles. This one works specifically for their Toroxes. I believe these are the ones who also have better Vox. No, those are the Cap Eagles. These are the Thetoid Eagles. Man, there's like two different Eagles. I can see that being confusing. Anyways, these guys, their, their Toroxes get to reroll hit rolls when they're shooting an attack or shooting at an enemy within 12 inches. It's okay, I suppose. I don't really, again, I don't know much about Toroxes. I don't really use them that much. It has to specifically be a Torox Prime, I should note. It has to be a Torox Prime. Rerolls, hit rolls at an enemy is shooting at within 12 inches. The last one is Daring Descent. This is the Gorgoness. Uh, whenever they, uh, a unit from your army was set up in high altitude, transport, until the end of that phase, when you set that unit up on the battlefield using the aerial drop ability, they can drop more than 5 inches away, not more than 9. So they get danger close. And that's it. That's all that one does. And honestly, that is it for the greater good. Only the Astra Mil Militarum part. They're still like Gene Steeler cults in here, and there is still, I can't remember it. I know what it is. I know what it is. Tau. Oh my gosh. That's ridiculous. It's literally got Shadow Sun on the cover. Anyways, a lot of stuff in this book, a lot of stuff to cover. Uh, we obviously will be covering both the Tau and the Gene Steeler cults. I'm just kind of spearheading the Astro Militarum part of it, so stay tuned to watch the other reviews. If you haven't already, if you come to the Astro Militarum one last, then hopefully you enjoyed the other ones. But uh, I tried to keep that kind of short and concise. I didn't want to go over everything, but I kind of ended up going over most of everything anyways. I kind of skipped a few of the Astro Militarum stratagems that weren't really all that great. And again, I did play a game in the vault, which is uh, between Vito and myself. He played Slanesh. I played Astro Militarum, my own custom regiment, and it was a very close game. It was kind of back and forth. As you know, Slanesh can be pretty nasty for the Astro Militarum if they can get it in there, right? It all depends on that. So check out that game in the vault if you haven't already. And if you did, hopefully you enjoyed that. Thanks for tuning in, everyone. Hopefully you enjoyed this. I keep saying hopefully you enjoy this or hopefully you enjoy that. Regardless, I gotta go. You gotta go, maybe. If not, go watch more videos, enjoy those. See you guys next time, and happy wargaming. Thanks so much for watching. After this review, don't forget to check out the battle report between Luca and Vito in the mini wargaming vault. They will be playing the new Astra Militarum versus the Demons of Slanesh. If you're not a vault member, you can still click the link below to get a free seven-day trial. 
A Vault members are what drive Mini Wargaming, so consider joining to support us in making even more miniature wargaming videos for you.